What's up guys, Shane here from 3D Printing. Today we're gonna to check out Ziltex Pet G. Welcome back. So as I said, we're gonna check out some of Ziltex Pet G. And they sent this to me like two months ago, but it was right as I was leaving to go on paternity leave and I was unable to even take a look at it. But we are going to now. And I do know that they did send a little questionnaire inside here, and they actually sent some results of what they had, uh, a few uh, settings, tweaks that you should make to it, some recommendations, I should say, and then a questionnaire. So I will be sure to email uh, the guys that sent this to me to make sure that they get it. But let's take a look at the roll itself. Uh, interesting how it has a little bit of foam in there. I don't really get that too often. and. It has this spool and this spool looks so familiar because it looks just like the new Folger Tech filament. Uh, it looks like Hatchbox. So I don't know if they're just using the same spool like manufacturer or if they're actually buying their filament from one larger company, which actually I think some of like Hatchbox of them is actually eSun. I think it is. I always forget which ones are which. I need to write it down. But anyways, all the same spool, several of the other ones. Uh, we've got some things here on the side. So it's 3D printing filament, doesn't have their name on it at all. It just says that it is PETG, it's 1.75. Uh, it's transparency and then some Chinese characters. It's one kilogram, nozzle temp 220 to 260 for this. So I usually print PETG about 240. And that is all that is on the spool. It's a nice clear, so clear filament, especially PETG can be really nice for certain things, vases being among them. Here we have the big old bag of desiccant and it's got a pretty decent smell to it. The wind on this is pretty nice. It's a lot better than a lot of other filaments I have. And it's fairly smooth, a little bit of texture to it for a Pet-G. This is a glued together spool so it should hold up pretty well, hopefully. Um, doesn't wiggle at all. And again, the wind is tight, but not terribly tight. Like sometimes when you squeeze these not tight ones, you will really hear everything move around. Uh, who does that? Maker Geeks is like that. So this, you know, is pretty easy. We just need to print with this. See how things turn out. So let's roll some time lapses and we'll come back, see how it turns out. All right, so we got a couple time lapses there, and I have to say, this prints like every other Pet G I've ever printed with. I've had no problems with it. Throw some glue stick down on some glass, and Pet G works out great. It is very, very flexible when it comes to single perimeter vases, depending on the, I guess, depending on exactly which model you're using. And it's very transparent, as you can see, my hand, you can see really, really well. As soon as I put it against it, you can see. As soon as I back up a little bit, it gets really frosted. That's a really nice quality of the filament there. It's super duper clear, and I'm not a big fan of clear filaments, but when it comes to something like a vase, something like this you can see through, it works out great. And again, this honeycomb one just came out absolutely fantastic. The only issues I can actually see, well, when using this kind of filament, you can actually really see if you have any rippling in your printer. And my FT5, when printing this, did have rippling, which I didn't actually know was going to be a problem. I didn't notice it before in other prints, but I definitely noticed in this one, but not really in this one as much. So I guess because this one is just so much more complicated. Either way, they came out great. They hold water. They're watertight. I did check both of them. And this was max size on the FT5. So compared to my head, uh, it's almost twice the height of my head. And this one was just 
the size it came as. I mean, this is actually a really good vase. Enough for the vases. Uh, now let's uh, look in here at the little stuff and see how the details came out with some little things. All right, first up, let's have a look at my Maker Coin, and this was my standard uh, print that I do with pretty much every filament that there is. Let's do this, and it came out great. It was you know four bottom, four top, fifteen percent infill, two perimeters. Support was on the bottom, and it came off super easily. It was a little bit stringy in here. This does happen with Pet G, not all the time, but for this one, it was just a little bit of a complicated model. So there was a little bit of stringing. You also sometimes get globs with Pet G, depending on some settings. I've gotten globs, they usually come out like the side and they usually just pop right off. But that's something that I've always had with Pet G, so clearly it's a, an issue with me. But it's very strong, it's great stuff. Can't really complain. It filled everything in here in the bottom, even though it's clear. You can still see that it did fill in everything just the way it should. Walls, super smooth. I didn't notice any under extrusions when I felt over this and looked over it closely. It just looked like it worked out very well. But again, that stringing uh, does happen. It's not a big issue, but let's see something else. Okay, if you have one of those Scotch Bright, you know, wands to do dishes with, you should probably have this print. This is another one I made. I'm actually going to give this one to my mom so she can have it. Making out of Pet G is much better, so there's flex here. Out of PLA, it does just break. But this turned out great. So this was three perimeters, 30% infill, four top, four bottom. And again, on that glass, it just comes out super smooth. You can see the layer there. You can see into the infill because it is a clear filament. But it is very strong for what it is, and this just gets mounted on the wall and your sponge hangs right on here and there's a little bit of an angle sometimes on this just from the weight of it so the water drips right off. I love this print. I love this model. Everything just came out so awesome. It was nice and crisp. The printer handed it without a problem. No under extrusions. Again, you can see through it a little bit because it's clear. All right, now I know my brother is going to love this, but this is a Jeep cookie cutter. And I didn't actually follow the directions on the print. This should have been printed at 100% infill. That way that this center part would fill in a little bit better. But that's okay. It still worked out, still sealed it. Um, these cookie cutters are like a one-time use thing. If you're gonna, like I think it's great to design something, print a custom cookie for like a party and then just pitch this because it costs a few pennies to print this. You know, a few, you know, two hours, a few pennies, you have a custom cookie cutter that no one else around has, and you're the talk of the town. But the bottom layer came out great. There's three bottom layers, three top layers on here. But again, really good. It's Pet G, so it does have a little bit of flex to it, but it is super duper strong. This one did not string as much. I have a little bit down in here, which you can easily just take a heat gun and blow on that, it'll go away. And there's a little bit down in this section here too. So a little bit of cleanup needed for this. Probably need to adjust my retraction settings for this print a little bit, but otherwise it turned out really good. I know it's clear on the background, but these are stacking shelves and I printed these before. A lot of people didn't like it because they're like, oh, they're so cheap to buy, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you need something now, these are a great thing to print because they are just little stacking boxes like so. And you can just throw your stuff in there and call it a day. It's really, really nice. So these are two just open ones. And then right here we have one that has a nice divider in the middle, which printed out very, very well, very straight. They all stack the way they should. And then I have this little uh, tray, which you can set on the top of here. Don't necessarily think you should always do that, but you can always set it inside of one of these as well. And it slides right down into the bottom. So you have a tray. You can just pull things out, you know, whatever have it. But these are an awesome thing. I actually will end up using these on my desk for little things that I'm working on that I want to keep track of. But I love this model. And again, it prints out great. Very, very strong. Even though it has some flexibility to it, it's a very strong print. I, again, can't say enough about this. And I just want to zoom in here so you can see the, you can say you can see the, the ghosting right here on the, corners when it goes around. So that's something that I need to change my acceleration and jerk settings on the FT5. But you can see, I mean, this is just super duper clear. Not as much as the six-sided one I have here. So it's not as clear as the six-sided one here, but I mean, that is pretty doggone clear. 
So here's up close. As soon as I back away, it gets real blurry in there. It's really, really nice. And this came out really well. Just real nice on those corners and everything. It did a great job on all this. All right, guys, so that's the Ziltec Pet G. Currently, they only have the transparent uh, on their store or in stock either way. I hope they get more colors because this, again, printed out like any other Pet G. It printed great. It sells for $17.95, so 18 bucks. Uh, I believe after you buy so much in their store, you end up getting free shipping. I don't know if it's like $50 or $70. So you have to pick up quite a few rolls. Their PLA is also really cheap. This is a pretty good low-cost Pet G. And actually might be one of the lowest cost ones I have seen yet. I've tested some pretty expensive Pet G before, and this stuff did not disappoint whatsoever. So good job on Ziltec. My disclaimer is that this roll of Pet G was sent to me by Ziltec free of charge for the purpose of this review. They wanted me to fill out a little form and send that back to them with my comments and any criticisms I would have of the filament. I will do that and send it to them. I am not being paid for this review, and I'm being compensated no other way other than sending me this roll to test out. So thank you, Ziltec, for doing that and keep up the good work. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Give me a comment down below. I'd love to talk to you and see what I can do better in the future. If you want to support me, best way to do it, subscribe down below. Every subscription really does help, hitting milestones left and right. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to support me financially, right below me is going to be a Patreon link. Go ahead there, check out what I have. Don't need me a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, you guys are great. Another way you can support me is if you don't want to spend some money, go down there. There's going to be affiliate links for all kinds of different vendors. Go ahead, update your bookmarks with that. Do your daily shopping. A little slice of what you buy comes back to me. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time, happy printing.